So hey everyone, in this video, we're going to dive into building a simple portfolio using Nextjs and a big shout out to Null Pointer Exception for this fantastic design. Without any further delay, let's get started by covering the basics. I have already got the basic project files and folders set up using the command npx create next app are the latest version. Now let's shift our focus to the animation. We'll be covering a couple of animations including the animated text, animated letters, animated body and animated words. To achieve this, we have a powerful framer motion library at our disposal. You can easily customize it to your liking. Now I'm going to create a new file where we'll define the animated component. This component will take several props such as class name, delay, step size, icon size and children. We'll be using the use animation hook from framer motion to control the animation state. Additionally, we'll use the use in view hook from react intersection observer to determine if the component is currently in view. Inside the use effect hook, the component checks whether it's in the view and updates the animation state accordingly. The animation itself is defined using the animated variants object specifying the initial and visible states of the animation. The transition object determines the delay, duration, and easing of the animation. We'll render a motion.div element that wraps the children components applying the animation and transition properties. We'll also map over the children using react.children.map and add extra motion effects to each children components like scaling and color change on hover and tap. Next up, we're going to create the animation body.dxx. In this file, we'll define a component that imports and utilizes the use animation and motion hooks from the framer motion library. We'll also import and use the use in view hook from the React Intersection Observer library. This hook helps us to determine if the paragraph is currently in the viewport, and we can customize its behavior using options like threshold and trigger ones. The use effect hook listens for changes in the in view value written by the use in view hook. When this value changes, it updates the animation controls to either store the visible animation or the hidden animation. The body animation object defines two animation variants, hidden and visible. The hidden variant sets the opacity to 0 and the Y portion to 1 EM, while the visible variant sets up the opacity to 1 and the Y portion to 0 EM. The visible variant includes a transition with a specified delay, duration and easing function. The component finally renders a motion.p element with various props, and the text prop is used as a content of the p element. Similarly, we'll animate the titles, letters, tools, and words. Before diving into the components, let's import the necessary fonts. Inside the components folder, we'll create background blobity, a cursor based navigation library, although we'll need to consider its cost. Containers, overlay, SVG, work, and more. Let's tackle them one by one. Starting with the background, we'll create two types, contact background and hero background. Both will follow the same process, rendering a video background with two gradient overlays. The video will be displayed using the HTML5 video element and the video source will be set to the appropriate location. It will play automatically, loop continuously and be muted. The gradient overlays will be positioned absolutely, covering the entire width and height of the parent container. One overlay will transition from a dark background color at the top of transparent at the bottom, while the other transition from a dark background color at the bottom to the transparent at the top. We'll also utilize Blobity for enhanced cursor-based navigation, though it's worth noting that it has $24 cost. If you prefer a free alternative, that's totally cool. Now we'll create some state variables using the useState hook, including is, hovered, and cursor position. We'll use a useRef hook to create a reference to the container element. Additionally, we'll define a function called getGradientStyle, which returns a CSS gradient style based on the angle prop. The component will render a div element with a class container and apply various CSS styles based on the prop and state variables. It also renders several child div elements with different class names. Moreover, the component attaches event listeners to handle mouse enter, mouse leave, focus and blur events on the container element. If you are interested in preloaders, feel free to add them, otherwise you can skip them. Either way, I'll include them in this project. Alright, now let's bring our vision to life by designing and implementing the sections. This approach is fully based on your idea of incorporating dynamic animations and using the appropriate context. With everything set up and ready, we are primed to move ahead and create our page. To start, we'll establish a state variable named isMobile using the useState hook. We'll also utilize the useEffectOnce hook to scroll the window 
to the top and determine if the window width is less than 768 pixels, updating the IST mobile state accordingly. This component also employs that use event listener hook to listen for the precise event, keeping an eye on the window width and adjusting the IST mobile state as needed. Additionally, we leverage the use probability hook to initialize a probability instance, configuring it with various options. Finally, we'll render a series of components and sections forming the home page. This will include a preloader, overlays, a navigation bar, hero sections, about sections, work sections, contact section, and photo. When we run the application, we'll be treated to super cool Next.js website that looks amazing. Here's how it turns out. Well, that's a wrap. I drew inspiration for this design from null pointer exceptions. So a massive shout out to them for the fantastic design. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.